Welcome back to So You Really Want to Learn Latin and our little trip through Roman history from the earliest times. Now we are getting to the end. We are in the final chapter of So You Really Want to Learn Latin Book 1 and we are going to finish Book 1 with the story of Cloelia. Now you probably remember that Lars Porsner with his band of hairy Etruscans, has been besieging the city of Rome on behalf of his friend, Tarquinius Superbus. Tarquinius Superbus, you will remember, was kicked out of Rome by the Romans, led by the noble Brutus, because they had decided they had had enough of being ruled by kings and wanted to become a republic. So far, so good, except that Tarquinius Superbus, when he was kicked out of Rome, went to the nearby city of Clusium, where his friend Lars Porsner ruled. And Lars Porsner had brought a band of Etruscans to uh, put Tarquinius Superbus back on the throne. Now, this hadn't worked because first Horatius, with his two friends, had held the Etruscans off uh, on the Pons Sublicius, and if you remember, he had manfully held off the entire army while the Romans hacked down the bridge, and uh, then he had got safely back onto the Roman side of the bridge, and the Etruscans under Lars Porsner had been frustrated and held on the wrong side of the river. The siege continued. Mucius Scaevola, you remember, had gone over to the Etruscan side of the river. He had um, tried to kill the king, but mistook the king's secretary for the king, killed the secretary, was dragged in in front of the king, and had then displayed his disregard for pain by thrusting his hand into the flames, which is why he was then called Mucius Skyvola, which means left-handed, because his right hand had gone pear-shaped. Uh, so this is all going on, and um, Lars Porsner is becoming increasingly in awe of the Romans because of these displays of courage. And then the sort of final nail in the coffin, as far as he was concerned, was um, they had some prisoners who they had managed to capture during various sort of forays around the city. And amongst these uh, prisoners were some young girls, young ladies, and one of these, whose name was Cloelia, decided that she was going to escape and get back to Rome. So with a small group of friends, uh, late one night they crept out of the camp down to the river and swam across the river and got themselves back into Rome. And this should have been an uh, opportunity for great rejoicing, but the Romans were a bit iffy about it because they had recently concluded a treaty with Lars Porsner under which they couldn't possibly be seen to be breaking the uh, rules of that truce. And to accept escaped prisoners back into Rome would have been against the principles of the treaty. So very reluctantly, they sent the brave young girls back to Lars Porsner with a kind of note saying, I'm really sorry, these people arrived, but it's not fair for us to accept them back because it breaks the treaty, so you can have them back again. And at this, Lars Porsner thought, Look, I'm sorry, these Romans, they are brave, they are honourable, they, you know, abide by the letter of the law, I'm giving up. So, Cloelia, her brave young friends, and a whole load more prisoners were dispatched back to Rome, and then very shortly after that, Lars Porsner up sticks and uh, went back to Clusium. And that was the end of that, as far as the Romans were concerned. So that concludes the story of Rome so far, as told in Book 1. We're going to be moving on to the next stage of the story as we move through this Latin course. But until then, keep up the good work and see you soon.